Today we explain the process of DNA replication in prokaryotic cells, including the role of the enzymes helicase, DNA polymerase, RNA primase, and DNA ligase. We also consider the Okasaki fragments and deoxynucleoside triphosphates. The nucleotide, made up of a phosphate bonded to a 5-carbon sugar and a nitrogenous base. This 5-carbon sugar, or ribose, loses one of its oxygens in DNA and as a result it is termed a deoxyribose sugar, giving it a formula of C5H10O4. If we were to number the five carbons in the deoxyribose sugar as carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, this would prove very useful in understanding the structure of the bigger molecule that is DNA. When one nucleotide bonds to another nucleotide, they do so by forming a phosphodiester bond. But this bond is created by the phosphate of the 5' prime end of the molecule plugging in, as it were, to the 3' prime end of the molecule where there is an OH. And in this way we say that when DNA is polymerized or built into a macromolecule that this polymerization occurs in a 5 prime to 3 prime direction. And when DNA assembles into its double helix, one long polynucleotide chain bonds to another long polynucleotide chain held together in the middle by hydrogen bonds between the nitrogenous bases. In the case of adenine and thymine, there are two hydrogen bonds, and in the case of cytosine and guanine, there are three hydrogen bonds. DNA coils into the form of the classic double helix, but this helix is the result of two polynucleotide chains running in opposite directions, or anti-parallel. I would like you to pause and to explain the meaning of the terms 5' prime to 3' prime and anti-parallel. When DNA is ready to be replicated in a cell, the relevant part to be copied is unwound or opened up by breakage of hydrogen bonds between adjacent purines and pyrimidines, or the nitrogenous bases. The enzyme that facilitates this process is the helicase, or the helicase enzyme. Lowering the activation energy for the breakage of these bonds, the molecule is unwrapped from its double helix state, and free nitrogenous bases are exposed. Recalling that DNA must be assembled in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction. What this means is that the 5' prime to 3' prime strand, or the leading strand, is the one that facilitates the initial construction of the replica strand, with the 3' prime end of this molecule being plugged into by the 5' prime end of its neighbor. It's important to note that DNA replication must begin with 
the help of RNA for the initial piece of the replica double helix is actually comprised of, of RNA nucleotides which are brought into position with the assistance of the enzyme RNA primase. These nucleotides are built from free nucleoside triphosphates present in the nucleus. The nucleoside triphosphate is made up of these two components and the triphosphate part of the molecule is energy rich and the breakage of phosphate bonds releases energy for allowing the combination of the nucleotide with the double helix and with adjacent nucleotides. Once an initial primer is constructed, another enzyme enters to assist in speeding up the replication process. This is DNA polymerase 3. The presence of this protein on the leading strand facilitates the assemblage of new DNA nucleotides from free DNA nucleoside triphosphates. As DNA polymerase 3 slips along the leading strand, more and more nucleotides come into their right position. We must bear in mind that DNA is replicated in a semi-conservative manner. And what this means is that the initial double helix shown here in blue gives rise to two daughter double helices with each one being built on half of an original strand. The strand that is first constructed is referred to as the leading strand, but another strand also needs to be constructed, and this is referred to as the lagging strand. And because DNA can only be assembled in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction, it means that for the lagging strand, construction must necessarily begin in this direction. And for that to happen, primers need to be placed at different positions on the lagging strand. Once these primers get the strand going, then DNA polymerase 3 can assist in bringing DNA nucleotides into the chain. What this does is it creates several fragments of copied DNA which later have to be assembled or joined or ligated together. And before being ligated together, the little pieces of RNA from the primer must be severed or cut off from the parent molecule. Two enzymes facilitate this process. DNA polymerase 1 removes the primer and leaves the DNA strand to be joined to another DNA strand. And this new bond that's created and moving in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction with a phosphate fitting in and with the assistance of the enzyme DNA ligase. It's significant to note that the 5' prime to 3' prime direction is the one that works, for there is a good reason for this. If it were that DNA plugged in from the 3' prime to 5' prime direction, or the opposite, then free phosphates would sit on the growing chain at any point in time. And because these free phosphates are very much prone to hydrolysis, or they can break off very easily. If they were to break off, then the growing chain would not be allowed to grow. Let's summarize this semi-conservative replication of DNA 
in prokaryotic cells. A good way to do this is to pay attention to the major enzymes and what they do. In addition to these major enzymes, there is the Okasaki fragment. The need to mention the leading strand and that the copy of this leading strand happens in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction and that upon the lagging strand several fragments are connected. Finally, I would like you to end by answering this question. Describe the role of enzymes in DNA replication in prokaryotic cells.